Hello and welcome back to Norfolk Fords. Today it is a horrible wet day, can't do any field work, and didn't really have anything exciting happening today. Until we got a demo. So we start off today in the wood chip store with the Merlot TF357140. This is your sort of standard size chassis machine if you were to have a Merlot for any sort of farm. This is sort of your benchmark. I only had a play with it for about an hour now, but already quite impressed by what they have to offer. This is very much a teleporter built for being a teleporter. It just seems really well thought through in a lot of places. So we're gonna have a play with it, gonna get the wood chip pushed up, and we're just gonna play with it for the next week and just sort of see what we think of it. So far, quite impressed. I'll show you the cab. So if we come in here, this is the cab. And it's all very simple, but everything's there at the same time, which is exactly what you need. Also, this is something which I quite like. Apparently they're the only telehandler on the market to have a 180 degree door which the amount of times you just need to jump in and out and in and out and in and out. That's a great idea. And to release it again, you flick that and pull it back around. Just a nice creature comfort, and that's just the door. We've got forward and reverse here. We also have forward and reverse here. And apart from that, it's a fairly standard joystick control. There's your boom, there's your auxiliary. I've got a nice big neutral button here. And uh, one thing which is quite smart, this here is a proximity pad. So the tower handler, if I just flick the key on, so I've got all the lights on now. <laughs> Turn the fan off a sec. Um, if I put my hand here, that's really cool. That's simple safety switch. Something satisfying about that, and now I can move about to my heart's content. So long as that light is green. Nice and easy. We've got uh, electronic part brake. We've got the override here, which I think is quite cool. So that locks your joystick so it won't do anything. And then that is your override, and it beeps at you like hell. Doesn't like that at all. But say. I have a hooligan kind of driver who's constantly trying to overload the machine. I can take that key out and he can now no longer overload the machine. He's locked out. He doesn't have the key. Like, how simple is that as an idea? You don't want your driver to be mucking about because he keeps overloading the bucket. There you are. Take the key out, he can't do anything. Nice big emergency stop as well. Um. Easy to read dashboard, nothing's hidden, you can actually see what everything is. A lot of these will turn off in a second. Apparently this symbol here, this triangle, is to do with the bucket. And this is something we ought to jump out the cab for before we do the rest of the cab tour. This just seems like a brilliant idea. Apparently this is more aimed at the construction side of their telehandlers. This here is effectively a big electromagnet type thing. It's an ID tag. This bucket has an ID tag that the telehandler can read. So when you hook on and put the pin in, the bucket says, hey, I'm this size bucket, don't fill me more than that. And then the telehandler's got way cells on it and it goes, that bucket can only do this. I'm only going to let you lift this. What a brilliant idea. And that, that comes from the construction side of things. So, Tim from uh, Cranworth Farm Services, he's given us a good walk round already, and that was just one of the f first things he showed me, that the bucket's got an ID tag. It sounds simple, doesn't it? Back into the cab, we have got boom suspension, which just turns on on the switch. You don't have to put it in a funky position or anything like that. You're just away with it. You've got... Um, manual for your DPF, which hopefully we don't have to use because DPFs are a pain. All your light functions, all your window wiper functions. Uh, reverse fan, and this I quite like. 
because obviously we do a lot of pushing up wood chip. Hold on. We do a lot of pushing up wood chip. And um, this here, if you have the this light on, this will set the, also, the revs of the engine. When I start moving the hydraulics, that will then apply revs to whatever I set this dial to. I just think that's a brilliant idea. It saves you sit there, you know, jamming the brake and the clutch and revving the hell out of it on the foot roll when you really don't need to be because you can just have that set so it does all your hydraulic functions as you want. It's then got a cruise control, uh, an eco mode, and a heavy load monitor. Flick through it there, eco, heavy. Then back to cruise. This does have cruise control. He did show me how it works, but um, that's not really important for now. There's your bucket unlock. You have to hold that as well as the auxiliary here. Different steering modes. D-plug. First time I've seen a Talhan with D-plug. And then um, you sort of balance gauge, which isn't too bad. Um, what else have we got? We've got rear pickup hitch, which is rated to 20 tonnes in the UK, which is quite respectable for a tail handler. You don't really need to be tipping trailers or anything like that. You just want to be carrying your fur or your seed bags or anything like that, really, is what a tail handler needs a trailer for. Uh, just helping out, really, is what I mean. Um, what else have we got? We've got this nice screen, very simple. Tells you all the readings you need, your revs and your hours. Um, and all these other little indicators. And um, apart from that, there's nothing really else I can show you without um, working it. So let's start, make a start. Right, I just want to show you this. I've just driven straight into this pile. Didn't feel a thing. That is some hydraulic power. That is impressive. Let's do it again. Boom. Awesome. And a lot of that is down to this engine control that I said about. You have that flicked on, and then you set this. So whenever I'm using the joystick, you'll hear the engine note. I'll send it all the way around and just show you. Such a cool feature, I really like that. Needs a bit of fine tuning for what we're doing, I think, but it's really doing this with very little effort. It is very good, very good indeed. But it is a bigger machine compared to what we used to with the JCB, so we have got to bear that in mind. But at the same time, I think bigger is the way to go with what we want to achieve out of a telehandler. Look at that. Boom it out. Sure, gauge. Tim did reckon that he's seen people drive these telehandlers with these buckets full pelt into like a grain store and it's just handled it. Now I don't think I want to abuse it quite that much by just ramming it into the wood chip pile but it brings you a lot of faith thinking that can 
really stack some some weight into that bucket. So effortless. Right, I can't believe this. That is a full bucket of chip and it quite merrily picked the whole thing up and put it on top here. That is a very good counterbalance. That, it's got the hydraulics, it just took it. Didn't quibble, didn't squeal. Took it up, plonked it up here. Very impressive. That is most of the pile pushed up. Awesome. Right then, let us have a look under a Le Bonnet. And uh, yeah, I would instantly say this is completely different to how a lot of people have a teleport set up. Somehow this is using the same amount of space that most teleporters have. And it actually looks like there's room everywhere. Look, my arm's inside. I can get to things. It's incredible. But uh, after doing a little bit of research myself, it's down to Merlot themselves having the patent on having a Tala handler with the engine in line to the direction of travel. And that is why you look at every other teleporter and most of them will be against. So the crank will be this way, not parallel, because they won't pay for the patent, which means they have to cram a lot more into the same space because they've got to be sticking the gearboxes and stuff that way. Whereas here, there's all my pumps. Got an oil leak? Never mind, I can see it. And it is, it's very clever of Merlot to have nicked that paint. But it's paid off in their favor, because look, I can see everything. There's the filters, the hydraulic filter is at the back tank around there, which is, again, easy. Most things on this I don't need to go underneath, I think, from what um, I've had a look at. You know, there's the engine, there's the coolant, there's the transmission, all the environmental exhaust stuff. And then the radiator is uh, laid flat instead, which is probably the only thing I'm a little bit worried about because being wood chip and that, as you can see, I've already sprinkled a fair bit of sawdust and stuff on top. If the radiator's here, are we collecting it? But these little tiny bits, which usually go into our teleporter's radiator, has been captured by the uh, by the cover. So that's pretty good. That's well thought out. So there you are. If you're thinking of Merlot. There's a hell of a lot of serviceability there. I like that. That's a nice, simple design. And like I said, a lot of that comes down to Merlot being cheeky and owning the patent to a parallel engine. Very good. Right, let's park it up. That's the heat. Pretty good heat. That's higher than I can stack it with the JCB. This is a metre longer boom. I think this is a seven metre and we're a six metre. So makes a difference but you see in that last clip that can hold a full bucket all the way up very impressive but let's not forget this is a bigger model right I think we're done pushing up the wood chip for today so uh, considering it's a bit wet weather we're gonna do a bit of a wet weather kind of job we're gonna go collect some horse muck from down in the village where it's on some hard standing, so uh, we'll see how that handles. Uh, I, I think it's got this in the bag, it'll be fine. Let's go.
come I couldn't overdo it and you have? I've not really done it. What was it beeping at then? Alright, I might have overdone it. Just go steady. No, that's your lot, innit? It's got a fair old kick on that ram. Him how you can turn it down a bit because it is a bit vicious. Good, isn't it? That's day one of the Mighty Merlot. Like it so far, let's see what the rest of the week has to offer. Thank you for watching my first impression of the Merlot. I thought it was a very good machine. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe to see our more in-depth review coming next week. And a big thank you to Cranworth Farm Services for letting us play with their demonstrator. Everything else, uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And we shall see you soon. And make sure you leave a comment. We always love a comment. See you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.